So it doesn't matter what you feed the body. It really ultimately doesn't. It can be a temporary permission slip to feel a little better, to feel a little bit more balanced. But ultimately, it does not matter what you put into your body or what you paste onto it. It doesn't. Now, what would happen if you drink two gallons of toxic material? You would probably die. Why is that? <clears throat> that is because you are part of your physicality at this moment is part of a collective structure, a collective matrix, a collective web of belief systems that you're hooked into. Now, again, like I said, the more conscious and responsible you become for your own creatorship, your own vibration, the less you'll be dependent on that. And there have been reports of mystics and monks being able to consume large doses of really highly toxic, unhealthy material and not have any effects whatsoever. This is why I say that ultimately speaking, it does not matter what you put into your body. However, since we are to an extent unconscious and we're not all at that level of vibrational mastery of alchemy, we're not that adept yet. And because for some of us, it doesn't serve for us to be so specific about everything and to be so consciously untied, unhooked from the collective, we therefore are to some extent agreeing upon the collective agreement of what happens when you ingest certain materials. So this is where you have to balance it out for yourself and say, well, what's the path of least resistance for me? Is it to sit here and find every single vibratory connection I have to this collective agreement about health, what causes disease, what does not cause disease? Or is it easier for me to just drink a little bit more water, a little less toxic materials? What is an easier permission slip for me to go about and explore my actual theme? Because the sole focus of your life or the main focus of your life should be your theme of what you are here to explore. What is in alignment for you? And sometimes for most people, it's not in alignment to completely undermine all these subconscious structures that you are a part of that help generate your physicality in a certain way. So all the health systems in place to the extent that they are, are for those that are the most sheep-like, shall I say, the least vibrationally conscious of who they are. Now, the more you regain that power, the more malleability you get with what, how flexible your body can respond to the things you ingest and the things that you do physically. We're getting into subtler grounds, but does it still make sense? So in other words, your belief, it might take, it might require more energy and more focus, which is then taken away from you exploring your theme, which may not be in alignment for you to start to understand and believe that gravity is not real and step off a cliff and be absolutely fine 200 feet down below. It is physically possible, but what is more the path of least resistance and what allows you to focus most on what's relevant for your exploration of consciousness? Is it to simply take the elevator down instead and not worry so much about the collective agreement? Or is it to really sit there for years until you figure out what it's like to change a gravitational field? Either way, but one takes away focus from your life more than the other. And sometimes that may be relevant if it's actually in alignment for you to understand and discover what it's like and how you can alter gravitational fields how you can insert a belief that completely is so convinced of itself that it is absolutely in a bubble reality from the collective that it agreed to be a part on part of here in its incarnational experience. It is possible, but what's the path of least resistance and what's the path of highest relevance? Does this make sense? It's a different type of example, but it applies to your physical health in general. So this is where the idea of mind what you eat comes in. If you were completely vibrationally conscious, it doesn't make any difference what you put in your body. In fact, you probably wouldn't necessarily put anything in your body because you wouldn't need to. However, since again, that requires its own kind of determination, focus and path to explore in full, it's not relevant for most people. So in general, eat things that are relatively healthy for 70 to 80% of your diet, at least and drink high quality water and don't ingest too many toxins unless your belief system is already so changed and so under your conscious vibratory command that you are free from those collective agreements that are subconsciously influencing your creation all the time. Why? Because you agreed to be a part of this collective. You're a part of the collective so that you can serve the collective. For some, it is relevant to become a testimony, to become a piece of evidence of what is possible. But for most people, it is 
more relevant to simply explore what it's like to be part of that collective, what it's like to serve, what it's like to share love, what it's like to discover more of who you are. And so for most people, it's not that relevant to really penetrate all these deep, profound and subtle layers of the collective's unconscious mind, if you will, that together generates all the things such as your breathing, such as your heartbeat, such as the gravity that you don't have to think of all the time so that you can actually focus on other things. It's only for a handful of people that it's relevant to actually be conscious of these things and be able to change them. Now for more and more of us, it will become more and more relevant to some extent to include more of those beyond the box kind of abilities and things, ways of seeing, ways of understanding and believing. So far still makes sense? Okay. Let me have a sip of water here because I believe this feels good. And it feels more effortless than to dehydrate myself and focus on the dry feeling until it disappears or focus on absolute not needing water, but it is possible. It is absolutely possible.